Servers are simply computers that are connected to the internet and they serve files. They can also receive data as well. So servers are just computers with a special job, just like routers. Routers are computers and their job is to root out the path for the packages to be sent to and from. Now, just like the mail system, you have a mailman and you can create a package, you can put an address on that package, you can send it through the mail, and you can also receive data back through the same mailing system. So you give it to the recipient, the recipient then receives it and goes, ah, oh, there's a return address and you get some data back. They send a package or letter back. So I want you to think of the web browser as the user, the one who creates the package. So when you go to google.com, what you're doing is you're creating a package. And in this package, what you're doing is you're saying, look, I want to receive the data. I want to receive the HTML, the CSS, the images, so that I can look at google.com. So what happens is this packet is created and it's sent to your router. Your router then sends it out to the ISP with the public IP address. Don't forget the private IP address is only for the local network. The router stores that private IP address and it stamps the public IP address on that packet. And then it sends that packet out to the ISP, the internet service provider, Virgin Media, Verizon, whoever it is that you are connected to. And of course, what the ISP will do is it will look for that server. That server again has an IP address and that packet is sent off to the server, which is just a computer that's connected to the global internet of things. And of course, it will receive your packet. It will take a look inside of that packet and it will see, ah, they're asking for information. They're asking for the home page of Google. So what the server will do is it will create a new package. It's going to create a new box and it's going to stamp the returned address on there. That's our public IP address. And it flicks the lid off and what it does is it stuffs all the data, all the files that we're requesting. And then it shuts the lid and it chucks it back to the ISP, the mailman. And of course, the mailman, the ISP, will simply take that packet, it will look at the return sender address, which is your public IP address, so it goes straight to your router, your router computer, and it will receive that packet, and of course, your router will know which private IP address the packet came from. So what you end up with is a mailing system, with the ISP being the mailman between you and the server. But something interesting to note, you know that computers can only work with ones and zeros and IP addresses are no different. They must work with ones and zeros. But how come you type in google.com? Well, actually what you can do is you can type the IP address directly in your web browser and it will bring up google.com because Google has an IP address. But remembering IP addresses like 192.168.22.44 or something like that, trying to remember all of that and all your different websites isn't going to happen. So we created domain names. Now domain names are not the server itself. Domain names are just there so that we can connect to the server in a human readable format. Instead of typing in 192.168.22.44, Instead of doing that, we type in www.google.com. And when we do that, we create a request. We create that request to fetch google.com and it goes off to the router again and the packet goes to the ISP, but we've got google.com. Now, the ISP does not have the ability to find a server called google.com. Google.com is for us, the people. So we don't have to keep typing in the IP address. So what ISPs have is a domain register and the domain register has IP addresses that have been registered. This is why you have to register a domain name. You can purchase server space, but if you just purchase server space, all you're going to have is storage on a computer connected to the network with no domain name, meaning people have got to type in the IP address to connect to your website. So 
typically with most hosting packages you have the hosting and you also need to pay for the domain name separately or included in the package but there are two services there because they have to register a domain name and every single ISP throughout the world has these IP addresses because don't forget we don't want ISPs to hand out these IP addresses these IP addresses are specifically for that server that's also why we need a domain registrar to make sure that IP address is registered and no other computer can have that as its public IP address. And this is why it's a little slow when you register a domain name. You can purchase the domain name straight away for the year or five years so you can lock that domain name to that IP address for that length of time. And then once the contract is up, you've got to renew it, otherwise it gets released but it does not happen immediately. As soon as you purchase the domain, it normally takes 24 to 48 hours for all of the internet service providers, the ISPs, you know, Verizon, Virgin Media and so forth, all of them need to update their registers, their domain registers. So that's why it takes a little bit of time. Now on top of that, with the mailing system, it's structured. If I am to send something, through my mailing system, Royal Mail, I have to make sure that I follow their protocol, their system. Put the address in the right place, in the right format, make sure the font is readable, put a stamp on it, and so forth. This is a protocol, and likewise, every computer in the world needs the same protocol. This is not one's in French and others in Spanish and so forth. Your packets are written in HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is a protocol, is a system, and your packets are made up of very basic text strings that say I would like to fetch data or I would like to get data. And also your packets can contain the binary data as well, such as your HTML and CSS files and so on. So again, all of your packets are structured in HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the system, the protocol, that ensures that all the servers communicate in the same way, ensuring that your packets are sent and received by the same mailing system that's standardized across the board. It's a very simple, elegant way of sending and receiving packets.